places where I, I am on the internet. A little bit unhappy with some of the matches, maybe the build. Obviously, AEW is dealing with a bunch of injuries at the same time. But Brian, as somebody who's talking about this a lot, what is your sense of the build? Do you like the build of the show? Do you think that there's things that they could do better? Are you ultimately sort of happy going into this uh, this weekend with what they've done so far? Well, you know, before I came on, you were talking about uh, the tendency to talk about the same thing over and over. Right. And uh, I I do a lot of shows, and I hate uh, repeating something that I said on another show. But the problem is it's, it's practically impossible to not repeat things. And uh, when you ask this question, I have to repeat something that I've said a million times, which is the day that this show was announced, I talked to somebody there who's, who's uh, you know, fairly high up. And, and they said, like, fans guaranteed are going to be disappointed that they're not going to get this match. They're not going to get this dream match. And they're not going to get those matches. But when the show's over, I think that they're going to be very happy with the show. And uh, that's what I heard on day one. That's what I believe today. I think when Forbidden Door is over, it's going to end up having been, like, a great wrestling show. But you're not going to get those matches that you you dreamed of. It's there's there's too much politics involved. There's there's you know the normal New Japan AAA politics. There's New Japan and, and AEW, which are work, they're working together. But each side has guys that they don't want to lose to somebody else. And so you've got to say, okay, these are the guys I don't care if you beat. These are the guys I don't want you to beat. Okay, well now we have to put these guys together. As noted, there's going to be injuries. I don't think the Brian Danielson Zack Saber Jr. match is going to happen. So that one's, I mean, they could tomorrow, maybe he'll get cleared. But I was kind of given the impression today that it's probably not going to happen on the on the show. So yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have that. And as far as the build goes, you know, I I we had a guest host on last week. We've had Lance on, and both of them said the same thing, which is I don't watch a lot of New Japan. And I watch Dynamite, and I see these people, and I'm like, who is this? What is going on? Who are these people? And you're going to have the issue the first year. Because as we've talked about a million times, the way New Japan books, they're not going to go beyond whatever their next show is. So until that Dominion show happened, I mean, it's, you can't start to build to Forbidden Door until Dominion's over. And it was the same thing with AEW and Double or Nothing. So they've had like three, four weeks to put this entire thing together. And that, by the way, is not like a normal pay-per-view. You have to introduce new characters. You have to get New Japan people on the show. You have to, uh, you know, get them involved with the current AEW guys to set up matches. So the first year was invariably going to be like this. There's going to be a lot of people on TV that that fans, they're not going to know who the great Okan is. They're not going to know who Jeff Cobb is. Uh, some of them aren't even going to know who like Tanahashi is. They don't watch New Japan. When we have another year of AEW and New Japan working together, and then a year from now you start doing the build towards Forbidden Door, and now it's guys that you know this guy, you know that guy. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot better next year. I think this is just going to be a tough year for all of those reasons. Andrew, you and I haven't yes. talked a ton about Forbidden Door because we were off uh, last week, but you you know you're we're we're getting ready. This is the go home show on Wednesday, leading into this pay per view, which uh, there there was just there was just a pay per view last month. So this is the first time AEW's done you know back to back months with a show. What is your feeling like? Is it as easy if you weren't doing this? Would it be as easy to plop down your fifty bucks for this show? Yeah, I mean. Listen, I'm I'm a huge wrestling fan, so I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it anyway. I I think the disappointment, some of the disappointment comes from obviously, like Brian said, everybody has these fantasy dream matches that they want to see happen. You know, Tanahashi and CM Punk would have been a first time, like never could possibly happen type match that was gonna headline this, and then everything else would have been secondary. I I think my disappointment in the show is that they I thought every match was gonna be a New Japan versus AEW match, and that's not what we're gonna get. There's there's a lot of other matches in between mm -hmm. here, like Tony Storm Thunder Rosa, right? Like I understand they couldn't do, uh, you know, New Japan doesn't have a women's division, but you could have done something else that was a little unique there. 
Uh, I don't know. I, I, am I disappointed? No, because it's going to be a fantastic show, right? Uh, match quality is going to be great. Uh, watching it is going to be a lot of fun. You know, injuries kind of played a part in this. Uh, hopefully Danielson announced tomorrow that him and Zack Sabre Jr. are in a match, you know, and that'll kind of make it better. But, you know, this is the first one of these. And I anticipate that with the success of this, they'll do a couple more and then we'll eventually get that Okada, whoever dream match. But the fact that Okada's not on, it says a lot here. Okay, so that's interesting because or on it yet or on it yet. on it. So I mean, so you there. I mean, there is a rumor out there that that they could turn this thing into a four way, and that might not even be rumor, and that might just be people trying to put two and two together. 